previously on Bear Fishing. Japan is known all over the world for its insanely unique lure market. Today I'm here to show you 12 lures that amount to over $250. You're wrong! You're fucking that were purchased straight from a tackle shop in Tokyo, Japan. Guys, if you want more details about that fishing store and want to see how it looks inside, check out my recent video right here. But for now, let's get straight into today's lineup. We got the Rudra Asura Osp. That kind of looks like a mackerel color and I feel like in salt water these baits would perform the best but even for pike and bass I will be using these baits like the other ones in my previous video. Over here you can actually see the name Sansui and how much it went for so this one is $23. As well this lure is produced by Toshinari Namiki. I hope I got that right. Come on now dog. The second jerkbait, this brand is called Maria Japan, and I don't know the name of this, but guys, check that out. Because I can't understand the back and it's in Japanese, I downloaded the Google app, and I'm gonna translate all of these baits so that we can understand what these baits are used for and how to use them for optimal fishing results. Boring. Nowadays, the shallow minnows have become indispensable in many situations in sea bass games and while the recent rise in pressure slim shape minnows have become standard it's made for big waves it's made for big sea bass in shallow areas with that shallow lip right there and i can't wait to use this for pike i really can i love the color it's something i use all the time here in montreal so that's going to work really well this company is called smith it's another jerkbait it says panfish 120 fsw Right here, it's a floating jerkbait. Check that out, guys. I love the color. I love that gold chromish at the bottom, the green and the chartreuse. That is gonna work well in stained water. Once again at the back, let's see what's going on. This lure is made for different types of sea bass. I won't be catching sea bass here, but I can guarantee that predator freshwater fish will be inhaling this bait. Here we have a super unique type of bait, guys. I'm pretty sure it's like a crankbait or a jerkbait. But I love the color of it. It's going to be one of the first lures I use because guys, look at that lip. And this thing on its own was $22. Once again, let's check what it's made for at the back. But I know that bass will inhale this bait. So the back actually suggests that the number one place you use this lure is in bay areas, which is really cool because I've never really seen that on a lure box in North America. So that is pretty unique, guys. It actually tells you to use it in a bay area. And the last but my favorite jerk bait that I'm showing you guys today is the D Scraper 125F. This lure has the most unique body shape I've ever seen when it comes to a jerk bait. This one I'm gonna take out to show you guys. It's definitely worth it. Guys, look at how awesome the paint on that is. Look how awesome the paint on that is. And look at the shape, look at the shape. And the loud rattle. That is such a loud rattle in this jerk bait and how thin that lip is right there. I've actually never seen a lip that thin ever. My gosh, this is such, such a cool bait. It's heavy, it's sinking, that's why it's for sure made for salt water. But in certain conditions, this is gonna be an absolute slayer. What I picked this for is probably walleye. I love that. This is, this is my favorite jerk bait here for sure. Now a bass jig. This is the one type of jig that was recommended by the worker at the fishing shop that my brother and his friends went to. It's the Jackal Nakata jig, made with tungsten. It's obviously made for bass, but this type of jig specifically, you can't get in North America, which makes it really cool for all you bass pro shops, bingers like myself. So this jig is made by Hiroki Nakata at Magnum Guide Service. This looks like a Slayer jig, especially, guys, look at the, look at the color. It's like a brown, Obviously, you know that works in stained water here around Montreal. And honestly, it's like a natural color. So I actually searched up the person who designed this jig, which is Hiroki Nakata, and he is a guide in Japan for bass fishing, largemouth and smallmouth. I didn't even know that Japan has a lot of smallmouth. So I searched up his Instagram, and here it is. So as we can see here on his Instagram, Hiroki Nakata, fishing charter and sea translation, royal blue fishing. Lake, no, I don't know how to spell that. Guide servers, 25 years in guide. Army, almost 30 years. This is crazy. Nakata Jig Developers, Lure Designer, Jack All Pro Staff. So there it is, guys. Look at these pictures of the smallmouth that he catches. I had no freaking clue that there was smallmouth like this in Japan. So let's see where he's guiding. I've never seen this place before. All right, there's the lake. That's sick. 
Okay, so it's basically on like the other side of Japan. That is awesome, guys. There you go. Oh my gosh, look at these smallmouth and largemouth. That is crazy. Here we have a kind of a blade bait. This is a very unique blade bait. It reminds me of the live target baits, but obviously once again, completely different being from Tokyo, Japan. Check out this Daiwa blade bait. Look at that. Look at that, once again, the price. This is only $12, that's considered cheap when it comes to Japanese lures. You know what I just noticed? How detailed the back of these are compared to like a Rebel box in the US. It tells you about the fall balance, it tells you what it's made of, and it tells you how to swim it in order to catch more fish. That is really cool. It literally tells you everything you need to know at the back of this lure box. Like I said, I cannot wait to use that. Now this lure is a type of jig lure as well. It's called a hardcore spin and it's 22 grams. This is one of the most unique lures I've ever laid eyes on as well. It has a kind of rainbow color and that huge blade at the back that probably gives it some amazing action. But like I said, super unique bait. And this one was actually designed in Japan, but made in the Philippines. How crazy is that guys? This is called the Shad Knife. It's a super small lure. And I feel like this is gonna kill for panfish if you're jigging or something, or even saltwater surf fishing. It doesn't say much at the back, but I will guarantee you I'll be using this lure. It's like a little jig. Seems like it's for salt water, but I'm gonna use it for fresh as well. Finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, and I don't mean the end of this video. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Let's talk swim baits and glide baits. So I want to start with this one guys. It's called the Gilroyd. This is actually $50 US online. It's made by Imakatsu, made in Japan. I'm going to open it right away. I need to show you guys the lure, how it's made, and what's actually given in the box. So check it out. It's a mini swim bait. You have the diving tongue right there, and it has the paddle tail action at the back. I'm literally getting excited just talking about it. Guys, look at that. Look at that, bass candy, literally bass candy. One of the coolest things about this lure is that they give you an extra tongue and they also give you an extra tail. That's more of a fork tail instead of this paddle tail. But personally, I'm gonna keep this paddle tail on. Guys, look at the action of that. Okay, that's not working. Oh, right there. That's crazy. You, like everyone watching this knows that bait's gonna work. Last but definitely not least, probably the best, is the TH Tackle Zoe. Limited color, tail walk it says. Guys, look at the craftsmanship on this lure. Look at that. It has like a jig skirt, has an under blade right here, two trebles on the side with that fur, and look at the paint on that lure. Look at that. Check that out. Isn't that stunning? So the reason this bait is called Zoe is because the Greek version of the name Zoe means Eva, which means living or living thing. So basically this bait mimics a dying, unnatural movement type of bait fish that actually tricks the bass into biting. So by adding all this shine in that, it, it shows like an unnatural movement as it's falling so that bass wanna bite it. And that is what I got out from reading the box. The second coolest part about this lure is that it was hand painted in order to mimic the same exact color as a bluegill in Lake Ashi in Japan. And I'm gonna show you where that is right now. So here it is guys, Lake Ashi. How far is it from Tokyo? How far is it from Tokyo? Okay. And it is close to this mountain. It's like a volcano. Mount Fuji, there you go. This lake is super cool. I searched up pictures of the bass in this lake and they have a different type of unique look. They kind of look like the largemouth in Alabama in that region. So it's really cool to know that that lure was specifically painted for the bluegill that live in that lake to mimic what those fish in that lake are actually eating. If you've ever bought or received Japanese lures in your life, guys, please let me know in the comment section down below. I find these lures so unique and they're so well thought through. It's not like some just random plastic that looks like a bluegill. And if you want more Japanese lure content, stay tuned for the part three where we're talking soft plastics. Look at these lures that literally resemble poop. In the next video, we're gonna be showing all soft plastics. I mean, a boatload of them that you can't find here in North America, if that's where you're watching from. And if you enjoyed this content, please hit the subscribe button. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on Bear Fishing. <laughs>